Hi everyone, today we're working on the neat code roadmap starting with arrays and hashing. So in this video I'm going to go through the solutions to all these questions in arrays and hashing. So let's just open all these up. For encode and decode strings, this question is a premium question, but there's a free link on the neat code site. So the first question is contains duplicate. We need to return true if a value appears at least twice in the string, otherwise we return false. So the easiest way to do this question is to use a set. So scene equals set for num in nums, scene.add num. However, we don't want the num to be already seen, so if num in scene return true. That means if we didn't see the a duplicate number in scene before, we should return false in the end. We're going to capitalize true and false, and that should be the solution. Yep, looks like it worked. So valid anagram in this question, we want to look at two strings and return true if they are anagrams of each other. Okay, so I think the easiest way is to sort these two strings. So the lexicographically smallest character will be first. So we can just return sorted as equals to sorted T. So what this does, it is that it sorts these strings and then puts them into an arrays. We can also just take a look at what sorted s looks like. Yeah, so it's the arrays with a being first, then g, m, r, just alphabetically. So if two strings are anagrams of each other, their sorted arrays will be exactly the same. And that should be the solution. Okay, nice. So to sum Given an array of integers nums and an integer target, return the indices of the two numbers such that they sum up to target. So there's only exactly one solution in this question, and you can't use the same element twice. So this question is a classic hash map question where we want to log the index of every number we've seen. So seen in this case, we're going to be a dictionary, which is a hash map in Python. So for num and nums, if target minus num is in scene, so a number that combined with the current number sums up to target, we're going to return the index of those. So return, we don't have i, we need to enumerate. i num enumerate nums to get the index. We're going to return i an array of i and also seen target minus num, so the index. So if target minus num is not in scene, we want to add the current number in c to scene. So seen num is going to equal to i. Otherwise, we just return nothing. Nice. There's exactly one solution, so we don't have to worry about the case where we return nothing. Looks like it worked. So group anagrams. Given an array of strings, strings group the anagrams together. You can return the answer in any order. So basically, if we have anagrams of each other, for example, eat and a t, we want to put them in a single array, and then put the smaller arrays inside a larger 2D array. OK, so we want to use the sorted strategy once again. So for, we're going to create an answer, which is an empty array, and a also a hash map for the sorted for so the sorted strings. So anagrams equals to dictionary once again. So for s in strings. The anagram or the key is going to be join sorted s. 
So sorted as puts s into an array where the elements are sorted, and then empty string join just joins them back into a string. So anagrams key, we're going to append the current string. So we want anagrams to be a default dict instead of just a dictionary, and then the default element is a list. So in the end, we're going to return a list of all the values of the default dict, which is essentially, let's call it uh, anagram for so should be anagrams of key for key in anagrams. And we don't need this answer array up top. Yeah, it looks like that worked. So this is basically creating a list in Python in one line where anagrams is a dictionary. We should also do dot keys. It does the same thing, but this is more standard. And I think that's the solution. Nice, okay, that worked. So next we have top k free most frequent elements. So given an integer array nums and integer k, return the k most frequent elements. We may return the answer in any order. Okay, so this is a priority queue question. Unless no, your algorithm's time complexity must be better than O log O of n log n. So we can't actually use a priority queue because priority queues have a runtime of O of n log n. So we actually need to use bucket sort or something faster than O n of log n. So let's create a bucket sort method. First, we need to create the counter for the number of times we see each element in nums. So counter is basically a dictionary that counts the number of elements and then matches it with the occurrences. So we also need to create a bucket. A bucket is an array of arrays and each, the size of the bucket is going to be the maximum number of occurrences in nums, which is the length of nums. So we should also include zero. Let's. So the range will be from zero to nums plus one. So for nothing in range when nums plus one. So once we have the bucket, we can do for key val in counter dot items. So for every counter item, the bucket of value, value is the number of occurrences should add append to the key. So the key is the actual number in question. So once we are done that, we can create our answer, which is going to be an empty array, and our index, which is going to start at the most frequently occurring element, and then slowly work our way to the least frequently occurring element. So the most frequently occurring element is going to occur all be every single element of the array, so it's going to have be length nums. So while the length of our answer is less than k, we want to stop once we reach the k most frequent elements, right? So if there is an element occurring i times, which is maximum number of times, or if there isn't. So let's say there isn't a number that occurs like the maximum number of times. So we should decrease i by 1. i minus equals to 1. So suppose there is a number that occurs i times, then we should add that number to our answer. Let's take from the back of the list, it doesn't really matter. And we should pop that number out of the list. And after that, we should just be able to return the answer. Let's see if that works. Okay, cool, that's accepted. And this is a O of n solution, as opposed to n log n, which priority Q requires. Try submitting that. 
Nice, okay. That worked. So next question is product of array except for self. So given an integer array nums, return an array answer such that answer i is equal to the product of all the elements in nums except nums of i. So when you want to do everything in the array except yourself, it doesn't matter product or anything else. It's a prior, it's a prefix suffix question. So we need the prefix of the numbers leading up to i and the numbers after i. So I was actually asked this exact question in an interview before. I can't say for which company, but it was a pretty simple question for an interview. First, we need to create prefix and suffix arrays. Let's call them pre suff. And let's just initiate how long they are. Zero for range. Zero. Let's just create them as zero for nothing in range when nums. What did I delete the bracket? Okay. So we need to create the prefix array, which is the product of everything leading up to the element, and the suffix array, which is the product of everything after the element. So let's create a curve called one because we want to multiply everything by one. So for num in nums times equals to nums of i. Sorry, it should just be num. And pre. Let's use enumerate again for i num in nums the current. The prefix of i should be equal to cur. So we can do the same thing for the suffix. So for i num in nums, we should reset cur after using it equals to one to make the suffix. So suff cur times equals to nums of negative uh, i minus sorry, negative i plus one. negative i minus one, sorry. And self of i is going to equal to cur. Actually, we can just do the exact same thing here and reverse the number of the elements in nums. So So let's just do a quick sanity check and print prefix and print suffix just to make sure we're doing everything correctly. 1, 2, 6, 24. So the suffix 1 is actually going the other direction. So, right, so we should reverse the suffix. Okay, so if we want to so, okay, we should just reverse suffix. I think this does the trick. command for this self that reverse okay nice that worked okay this question is taking a lot longer than I thought so let's create our answer array which is going to be nothing for I we actually need to create the first element of the answer array this is an edge case because we only have a suffix here so answer array zero element zero is going to be the suffix array of one and we see that the constraint says the n number of elements in nums is at least two 
so we could do self one safely here. So for i in range one, len um, is minus one. So you want to iterate through the element except the first and the last element. And we should append prefix of i minus 1 times suffix of i plus 1. And finally, we should add the last element. So ans.append prefix of len nums minus 1. In the end, we can return this. Not sure why it's taking so long. But let's go to the next question. So valid Sudoku. Twenty-four. Okay, so the output is wrong here. The last number should not be twenty-four. So ands dot append. It's the prefix of the second last element. Okay. So len nums minus one is the last element. We want the second last one, so it's minus two. Okay, let's try submitting that. This question took a lot longer than I thought. Nice. So in valid Sudoku, we need to make sure every row, every column, and each of the three by three boxes all don't have duplicates. So this looks like we should be using sets for these. And we need nine sets for rows, nine sets for columns, and nine sets for boxes. So, so rows equals to a list of sets for nothing in range. This is it always going to be nine? Okay, board length is always nine, so we can just use nine here. Calls equals to set for nothing range nine and uh, boxes equals to set for nothing in range nine. So let's go through the rows first. So for Oh, we'll go through them all at the same time. For i in range when we don't need len, we'll just go 9. For j in range 9. So rows i is the rows. So rows i dot up. So the value here is going to be for i j. So rows i dot append value. Oh, okay, we should check if it's in any of these. So if val in row of i or val in calls of j or we need to create the box. So box is going to be i over 3 plus j over 3 j over 3 times 3 so this is the way we get to the num the box index so for example if our number is the top left one that's 0 0 so it's going to be in box 0 suppose it's the one where my mouse is so i is going to be 0 j is going to be 1 so j, divide, j over 3 divided is going to be 1. So 1 times 3 is 3. So this is the third box here. Because, and we will go down like this. So 0th box, 1st box, 2nd box, 3rd box, and so on. So or box in. Or box val in boxes. Return, this is not a valid Sudoku, so we return false here. 
So otherwise, we're going to add it to the rows, columns, and boxes. Now, calls only. So sorry, calls should be J, not I. And then we should return true if we never encountered false. See if that works. Not sure why it's taking so long again. Let's look at the next question. So string encode and decode. No, wrong answer. Okay, so we should skip if it's a dot. The dot is making us return false. So if if val equals to a dot, this is just an empty box. We should skip this, so continue. Okay, nice, that worked. Yeah, that's accepted. So string encode and decode. We want to create an algorithm to encode a list of strings into a single string. So encode up here. And the encoded string is then decoded back to the original list of strings. So here, I think the trick is that we need to know how long each string is in the input. Because if we don't know how long, then it's impossible to split the strings where we want it to be. Otherwise, it's just neat code. We don't know where to split it into two different words. Because strings I can also contain UTF characters. So if we use a barrier, for example, like neat block code, this doesn't actually work because this character could also be part of a string. OK, so I think we need to put the number of characters of a word before the word but numbers can also be part of the word so we need a way to split it so essentially it's going to look something like this so four split neat so once we reach a special character we know the number ended and then we count the number of characters after that okay that makes sense so let's say the answer is it going to be a string we encode it into a single string for s in strings uh, ands.append let's just do plus equals to string of len s we also want a special barrier character and then ands plus equals to s the actual string so after that we're going to return the answer so now working on decode we know the answer is going to be an array and we want to first we want to count how num how many characters are in each number and that will be the start of every word so let's create two counters i and j they are equal to zero and while i is less than the length of our string here while j s of j is not equal to the barrier character we want to increment j so now j is equal to the barrier character, so word len is going to be equal to s of i all the way to j, where j doesn't count in this string. So word length is an int, so we want this to be an integer. Okay, now we can add this word starting at j plus 1. Let's actually type out what this word would look like. So it would be for barrier neat for barrier code. Okay, so here we want to add this word, so ands.append, s of i, sorry, j plus 1. We want to start at the character after j, so after the barrier, and end at j plus 1 plus word length, because the word has word length characters. And then i equals to j equals to j plus i plus 1 plus word length. So basically where our word ended off one after the word ended off. And then after that, we will just want to return the answer. Let's see if that works. Nice, okay, that worked. 
I think there's more than one way to do it. This is just one way where we count the number of characters in each string. So we're done with this. Next question is longest consecutive subsequence. So given an unsorted array of integers, nums return the length of the longest consecutive element subsequence. So here in example one, the longest consecutive subsequence is going to be one, two, three, four. 100 and 200 don't do anything in this case. Okay, so we need a solution in O of n. So we can't examine every single number in nums. We only we should only be able to examine each subsequence one time just to make sure it's O of n. And the easiest way to do that is to make sure we start at the smallest number in each subsequence and count that subsequence a single time. So one way to do that is with a set. So c equals to a set or num in nums. C add num. So again, so for start, let's call start the starting number in the subsequence. So for start in nums, if start minus one in scene, so let's say like three, for example, three minus one is two. Two is one of the elements in the set, which means three is not the start of a subsequence. That means we should continue and just disregard this case. So now end is going to be start plus one, while end is less than, sorry, while end is still in scene, n plus equals two, one. So first, we, for example, we start with one, then we'll try two, two is also in scene, then we try three, and then we try four, so on, until five, five is not in scene. So we should create an answer equals to one. One is the minimum length. And after we're done finding the biggest end, n equals to max of ants, or n minus start. That's how many numbers are in it, the sequence. And we want to return ants after that. Okay, it looks like that worked. So we want to return n minus start just because that's the number of elements in the sequence. In example one, five is the end we're going to end up with because five's the first number that's not in scene. And 5 minus 1 is 4, which is the number of elements in the sequence. Let's submit that. We have a wrong answer here for when nums is 0. So, sorry, when nums is an empty array. OK, we expected 0 and got 1. So this is just a special edge case. If when nums is equal to zero, return zero. Try submitting that again. Mm -hmm. Nice, that worked. So that was all the questions in Neat Code Roadmap for arrays and hatching. And I will see you guys next time for the next part of the Neat Code series. Thanks for watching.